Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making a Cricut dust cover that looks just like this. So if you remember in my previous video that I'll have linked down below, I made this dust cover. So, and it's reversible. So this is a highly requested video for me to re-record. I did on this one, I'm not gonna show you cutting the material out with the Cricut Maker, just because I wanna save time. I wanna be able to save that for the sewing. So if you wanna see it being cut out with a Cricut Maker, you just need to go back to my previous video that will be linked down below and you can see that. So let's go ahead and get started. So the things that you're going to need for this is, it's going to tell you that you're going to need, so first of all, let's go ahead and start with some of these pieces. So you're going to need either some um, some stick pins or some uh, quilter's clips to help hold things together. You're going to need a safety pin, and I'm just using a quilter's clip, because I'm quilter safety pin because that's what I have on hand. That's going to help with your elastic. You're going to need a rotary blade because you are going to have to get these to fit your mat as well as cutting out your final piece. So you are going to need a rotary blade as well as a rotary mat. Unless you just use your scissors. So you you could also just cut that out with your scissors. So here's uh, this is the Cricut pair of scissors. I'm just using this because this is what I have on hand right now. And then um, you are going to need a 12 inch piece of elastic for your um, sides and instead of cutting this in half it doesn't discuss that but you could cut this in half one for each pocket i'm just going to go ahead and tack it down pull whenever i cut it i'll put it on the other one so i'm not going to cut it in half um and then but you can do that and then you're going to need this this is what makes you if you're going to make your own bias tape um you would need one of these right here and i can't even think this is like a um I cannot even think what it's called, but basically it makes your own bias tape. But I bought this as like a package of like five different sizes off Amazon, a couple dollars. If not, they do carry these inside of Hobby Lobby in case you are wondering. So I used the bigger one and just ran this through and created my own bias tape because you are going to need your, um, your final bias tape for this. So this is what I've chosen. This is what I did. I made this by myself. Or you can purchase it. Um... You can also just purchase it from Hobby Lobby. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started, and uh, let's talk about the first step that it talks about. Okay, so the first step, what you're going to need is, let me move all of these pieces out of the way. Okay, so the first pieces that you're going to need that it's talking about, it says, assemble the top of the dust cover by aligning the tabs on pieces one, three, and sewing right, right, you know the right sides together so this is what it's telling you to do now I want you to remember when you cut if you have a fabric that has a design on it make sure what way you cut this on your mat so this is that way your design can stay just right on your thing so just like your stripes you wouldn't want to cut this the other way to where it was this this and this way because your lines wouldn't go straight up and down so pay attention to that when you cut okay so and I'm explaining a lot because this is obviously for your n more of your newer type sewers, okay? So if you um, if you really know what you're doing, you could always just really skip ahead. So what this is saying is you're going to take see how it's got these two arrows right here. What you're going to do is it's saying right sides together. So what we're going to do the very first thing we're going to take this and we're going to take it over to the sewing machine just like this. So we want to line up these two. Um, we'll call them triangles right here and then you want to make sure you perfectly line these up on the corner here so then I'm going to clip that and I'm going to come right here in the center and clip this one just so I can make sure they stay where I need them to be and then I'm going to come down to this end making sure it lines up and clip it as well so let's go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine, sew right down here, and we'll come right back here. Now we're at the sewing machine, and what we're going to do is we're going to lay this right down here, and I just have it on a regular straight stitch. I have my regular foot in, and you want to sew a half, you want to show, it, they have it as a half inch uh, seam allowance, okay? So we're going to drop our foot right here. And I got my first clip out here, so we're ready to sew. And then I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna back stitch, and come back forward.
Okay, so I just back stitched again. We're going to pick our foot up and I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors or I could take the side of my machine, but I'm just gonna take my scissors here and trim that. I'm gonna go ahead and snip these little threads while I'm here, just like that. So let's go ahead and take this back over there and press it. So what we have done is we have just taken a half inch and sewn all the way straight down. So we've just sewn all the way straight down. So now what we're going to do, and you want to press this towards the dark side of the fabric, which would be this top one, I would think, here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get that seam pressed down just like this. And then we're going to fold it over and just press our seam right in, just like this, okay? Just like that, okay. So now we're ready for the so on the other side, okay? So we're still on step one. Is we're going to take our other top fabric here and we're going to lay it right on top. So right sides together, we're going to lay it right on top of this accent piece. And we're going to now line up these triangles right over here. And then I'm going to once again take my clips. I'm going to clip right here. Clip right here and then we'll come clip on this end. So let's go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine. We're gonna sew straight down again and come back. The same thing we did to the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and take my clip off, drop my foot, forward a few stitches, and then I'm gonna back stitch a few stitches. Now I'm going forward again. Now when you come to like this triangle right here, just leave it on the right side of your foot and make sure you're coming straight down the fabric, okay? Okay, so I went back, I back stitched a few stitches there as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. Like I said, go ahead and trim my pieces of thread while I'm here. And then I will get this side as well. Just kind of help so you save you time. Okay, so let's go ahead and press this out. So now we have done the same thing to this side. So we have sewn straight down, just like the, just like uh, we did the other side. And these little tabs right here, all you gotta do is take your little scissors and you can just snip those right off, or you could just leave them there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna press our seam here, just like this, just pushing on it just for a second. That just helps secure it all. And then we're gonna press this out. Remember, we're pressing out to the dark, and what it means is just trying to find your darker fabric so it doesn't bleed through through your lighter fabric, okay? So if you don't do that, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. Okay, so now this is what your first piece should look like. It should look just like this. You have your accent piece in the middle, and you have your two top pieces here on the outside, okay? So this is step one, and it's complete, so let's go ahead and set it out of the way. So the two pieces that we're going to need, well, actually four pieces, that we need for the next step are gonna be all of your pocket pieces. And those are these ones right here. So the next pieces that you need is these pocket pieces right here. So you should have two of the inside lining and two of the outside lining. So, and these are number six, I believe. These are all number six. So this is the second step. So what you're gonna now do is you're gonna take, and let me just set one of these out of the way here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take an inside lining and you're going to take an outside lining. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna line these up, right sides together again, lining up the triangle. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to clip the top again and clip the top. So in the picture, the side that they're showing that is sewn together that they consider the top is this side right here. See how you got the, the arrow and it's more down here at the bottom? They're gonna consider this the bottom. So this is the top. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna put a clip right here 
and you're just going to line this side up and put a clip right here okay so let's go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew straight down right here remember these arrows are more down here towards the bottom up here towards the top where you have a big gap this is where you're going to put these so let's go ahead and just sew right down the, the side here okay so we have our side pocket pieces lined up right sides together and now we're going to remember that we're doing a half inch seam allowance so we're going to go ahead and drop this foot okay we're doing just as the same as we did with the first piece okay so what we're going to do is sew down a little bit then we're going to back stitch and we're going to sew down making sure everything is staying lined up And I'm going to back stitch. Now you really don't have to back stitch since these are going to be sewn in your seams. I just don't want nothing to happen to it while I'm working with it. So I just always try to um, back stitch if I can remember because I would hate for it to come apart at all. Okay, so I'm going to just trim those threads and let's take this and go get it pressed. Okay, so I did the same thing that I did to the first piece over there. So we just sewed straight down. This is a half inch seam allowance. And what we're going to do is do the same thing. We're just going to press it. What we're going to do is just push out and press this out. Okay. So now remember, this is our outside fabric. This is our inside fabric. So what I'm going to do is, what, we're, what it says to do is it says to take the elastic and tack it to one side of the fabric or right underneath your seam allowance. So whether it's going to be on this side here, right underneath it, or whether it's going to be on this side, right underneath it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, so once you tack this down, our next step is going to be to fold this over and stitch all the way down and then pull our elastic to make this screw. We're going to just tack it down right below this seam allowance, just like this. So you just want to put a little tack here. Don't come sewing way down. Just get a little tack here, okay? So let's go ahead and go do that. See that uh, seam allowance right there? We're just going to get it right below, which it would be on top considering here just like that and this is on the top side of the fabric and we're just going to sew a little tack just like that so what i'm going to do to make sure i'm going to put my fabric in this direction and line this up all the way to the edge here and i'm going to put this in here and come about the half inch drop my foot down and then what I'm going to do, so I have my fabric in this direction, because I'm just tacking straight down. Now, I don't want to try to go over the, over the elastic. I want to stay on the elastic. So what I'm going to do is take a few steps forward, okay? And then I'm going to take a few steps back, and then take a few steps forward, and then take a few steps back, just like that, okay? So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and trim that. So I did that about three times. That just kind of helps secure it so when we start yanking on it, it won't pull off. So when you get it tacked on there, it's going to look just like that. So our next step is, it's saying to take and, well, you're going to line this up just like this. So it's saying to fold your fabric down just like this. It says fold it in half. So let's see what happens when we fold it in half. And what it wants us to do, so I'm just going to adjust that in there, making sure everybody's laying correctly. So what it wants you to do is fold it completely in half just like this. So I'm just pushing my elastic up here so that way it's out of my way. Just like that. I'm going to kind of carefully, because I don't want to push on it because my elastic's in there. So what I'm going to do is just making sure my elastic is all the way pushed up to the top here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come, it wants us to sew a half inch from the top here. So you're going to come on the other side. Try to sew right on the other side of this elastic without getting on the elastic. Because as soon as we sew straight down just like this, we're going to take our safety pin and pull it. And it's going to start pulling this together, okay? So let's take it over to the sewing machine and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I've done here is I just took 
my clips here. So you see how I have it folded in half? I took my clips here and I took where the elastic, I pushed it all the way up here. So I just took my fingers and kind of pushed it and peeked in there, made sure it was where it needed to be and put a clip. That way my clips are holding my elastic where they need to stay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this under the sewing machine just like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over just a hair to make sure that it does not sew my elastic down because I don't want it to sew my elastic so I wanna be able to pull it and scrunch it. So I'm gonna make sure I follow this line right here on my sewing machine so I found myself a line and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm where I need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my foot and I'm gonna go ahead and come forward a few steps, making sure everything is folded completely in half perfectly, making sure my elastic's staying out of the way. I'm gonna reverse a few stitches, okay? And then I'm gonna come forward, just following this line right here on my, because to me, it says to go a half an inch from the top piece right here where you fold it in half. It's telling you to come from this top piece. But if you did that, you're going to run into running over your elastic. So just come over maybe another quarter inch, because this is just your top stitching anyway. It's not gonna hurt anything. Come over another quarter inch, so follow one of these lines on your sewing machine. And that way, so basically come over, what would be at three fourths of an inch whenever you sew over this. So that way you don't run over the elastic because you don't want to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep going forward. Okay, so I did a reverse stitch. So now I'm gonna pull it out and I made sure that I avoided that. And if you come off your line just a little bit, um, so this is what it looks like just like this, you won't really be able to see because this is gonna be scrunched together anyways. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna take your safety pin here and you want to poke it right into your elastic right here at the end. You wanna grab enough of it where you have a hold of just of your elastic, just like that. Go ahead and close this off. And now what we're going to do is you're gonna pull this all the way down. So what you're doing is you're gonna just pull, pull, pull. So that's what it's telling you to do. Pull this down. Do I would cut two 12 pieces, so make sure you have 24 just to make it easier on you. I'll bring it over to the other camera to show you a little bit better. Let me go ahead and sew the other pocket and have it just like this. So I want to show you what uh, Cricut actually had intended for this. So we have the elastic again, so this is times two. And this time, I'm going to show you uh, what Cricut, on their, on their instructions, what they had actually intended for you to do. So you just figure out which way you think is easiest. Okay, so once again, get that just like you did the other one. You want this um, elastic right underneath that seam allowance, okay, just like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing. We're just gonna get it under here and just tack down um, a piece of it. So I'm gonna get this back underneath here and put my foot down and we're just gonna tack this down. Let me reverse and come forward. Reverse and we'll come forward one more time. Okay, and then pull our foot up and we're gonna go ahead and cut this off, okay? Now let me show you, let me trim these pieces right here really quick and I'm gonna show you what Cricut had actually intended with the instructions. Okay, so what they had actually intended was once you get that tack down, throw this on the outside. So you're already gonna have your safety clip on here. You're gonna throw this on the outside, fold it in half, like they had said, fold it in half. So let me get on this side so that way you can see what we're doing. Fold it in half just like they said. Then you're going to press that again. You're gonna put it back under here, and just like they said, you're gonna sew it a half inch. So we're gonna do this one the way that they said. Okay, so we're gonna put this under here, making sure everything's lined up. So you're gonna, like I said, make sure the elastic's hanging out the other side. Okay, so we're gonna come, make sure everybody's lined up. 
okay? And I may go ahead and put a clip here and there just to make sure these fabrics stay where they need to be. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come that half inch like they said. I'm gonna back stitch, come forward. Okay, and then I'm gonna back stitch again. Okay, now make sure you don't run over this elastic when you get here, because remember it's hanging out this side. So we're gonna lift this up, trim our threads. Let's go ahead and get these trimmed really quick, and I'm gonna show you what Cricut's idea was. All right, so we're just trimming threads. Okay, so let's go ahead and take, take this over to the pressing area, and I'll show you how we're gonna do this one. This is the one that we did first, okay, and like I said, I already had the elastic in there. We just sewed down, making sure we avoided the elastic, had our safety pin, and pulled it straight through. Okay, so there's number one. On the second one here, what Cricut had us do was tack it down just like we did with the first one, but we hang it out the end, and then we come down the, quor the quarter inch, okay? So what you then are supposed to do is take your safety pin and you're going to just come back in here okay so you're going to take your safety pin and you're going to come i want to make sure i keep this straight here hold on okay make sure you keep your elastic straight come back in through that half inch um little thing here and now you're just going to push your and pulling just like this very gently you're going to push your safety pin all the way through so just keep pushing and pulling very gently so you just determine I thought I would go ahead and show you both ways and you just decide which way you think is easier for you which looks better so I'm gonna have two different looking sides here just a little bit on the trim here but I wanted to be able to show you so that way if you get intimidated by something like this or the other way it's whatever you're gonna do so you're gonna make sure you pull that all the way through so the once it's all the way through there it is so that that's how it's going to look now if you do it the way that so this is how tight it will be up here okay now if you do it the way that I did and like I said I skipped a little bit more you're going to have this look here so it's going to come down just a little bit further because like I said I did three-fourths of an inch and um, it's going to look more like this side and once we get it complete I'll be able to show you that so you can either have it tighter or more like this it just really doesn't matter whatever you prefer it's still going to work the same but whatever's more easy for you so okay so what got these done do is we're going to leave these just like this we're going to set them aside and we're going to move on to the next step Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is you're going to take one of your pockets here. So you're going to take um, your, this is the outside fabric, not your inner lining, okay? So you're going to take your, one of your outside pieces. You're going to take your, um, and don't worry about where it's um, bunched up here at the top. So what you're going to do, so these dots that it had created for you to have these lines, what you're going to do is you're going to create a pleat. So we need to take, and you can either use your pins or your, um, or your, um, little clips here so what we're going to do once again we're going to line up all three of these um, arrows and you want your outside fabric here to be on the outside so you're going to have your inside this is going to be your inner lining and it's going to bump up against your outer pocket here okay so take your other side and line up your arrows and line up your arrows again and let's go ahead and pin that okay then what we're going to do is we need to create the pleats down here. Okay, so we've got this one right here. So what we're going to do, let's try to find the center. So I'm going to have these kind of straight like this. We're going to try to find the center of this fabric here. So say this is the center. I'm going to go ahead and pin that down. Then you've got your little your dot here. What we're going to do is we're going to fold this. We're going to fold this just like this so creating a pleat just trying to keep everything down here at the bottom straight so just like that trying to make sure it's all staying straight and I'm going to use two clips one to clip this side of the pleat and one to clip this side of the pleat 
Okay, so now we're going to come and do that exact same thing to this side. Just keeping my all three of my corners lined up here. And then just finding where I want my pleat to be. Say just like this. Just making sure I'm keeping that bottom lined up like so. Just like that. And what you really want to be able to do is have these pleats be pretty similar. And uh, that looks good enough to me. So you just want to make sure these two pleats look pretty identical. So I'm going to clip that pleat and clip this pleat. So then when you get done, it should look something just like this. So hopefully you guys can capture that. Everything's straight in line. And then um, you can always come up here to just feel safe and maybe put a pin on the side here. Because we're going to have to come up the sides as well. And then I'm going to come up here to this top piece and put a pin or a clip as well, just like that. So now let's go over and take this over to the sewing machine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a fourth inch seam allowance this time, because basically it's like a base stitch, because when we come in and sew, we're gonna have a half inch seam, and it'll come above this, okay? So we're gonna go one fourth inch, and we're gonna sew all the way, so we'll start from like this top piece. You wanna make sure that you catch your, make sure this is as bunched as you want it, by the way, before we clip this. So let me make sure this is as bunched as I want it on the top. So just like that, and then pin it, okay? So what we're gonna do, when you sew down, you wanna make sure you capture this um, elastic here. So go all the way down, and then come all the way this way, and come all the way up, okay? So let's go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine, and I'll show you what I mean. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one side, so that way I can come all the way up and around. So I'm gonna unclip this, making sure that I'm keeping it all together. And I'm just going to line it up like this. And like I said, we need a one fourth inch. So I'm just going to make sure everything is together and lined up good. So I'm going to drop my foot right there. And then I'm going to just start coming forward. And I'm going to go ahead and go backwards just to protect this elastic because this is the side that didn't get tacked down yet. And come back over it again. Okay. So all the way straight this way, I'm going to do a fourth inch seam allowance. Taking out my clips as I go. Take out this one. Okay, I'm gonna drop my needle so that way I can turn this. Okay, holding on to it so I don't drop that pleat. Okay, I'm gonna drop my needle and we're gonna keep going forward. And then holding on tight, just making sure that I'm keeping my pleats held down. So I'm just going to keep going. Pulling out my clip slowly as I go. And you don't really want to rush this since you're messing with so much fabric at one time. So we're going to keep going, making sure I get that pleat under there. Just like that. I'm going to do this one. Okay. Okay, make sure you keep your needle down again. We're gonna turn it. I'm gonna pull out this clip and we're gonna come forward. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out this clip here. I'm gonna go nice and slowly to make sure that I catch this elastic. And then stop before I go over that. So we don't want to go over. So we're going to stop, reverse, and back stitch a couple stitches. Okay? And we don't have to worry about that elastic because that one was basted down. So now we're done with this pocket. So we're going to lift it up here. And go ahead and cut all of our threads at one time. Just like that. And we'll go ahead and at this point, you can go ahead and take and trim your elastic off. Okay? So just like that. So now you have your pocket. So let's go ahead and I'm going to, let's do the other one and then we'll go back over to the pressing board. Okay, so I've got this all clipped and now we're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start on my next pocket. Now this one I had to clip a little bit more because it was so cinched because this is the one that like Cricut recommended. I am liking um, how cinched it is compared to the first one I did. So just an FYI. So we're going to do the fourth inch seam allowance again. Now this one's a little bit hard, like I said, because it is cinched, trying to get it to stay up here at the top. Okay, so we're going to one fourth inch, we're gonna drop it. So this one may look 
It's gonna be hidden anyway. So it's no big deal. Just get past that cinch. Okay. So now we're just making sure everything else is staying lined up. We're gonna continue to come down one fourth inch. Okay, I'm gonna take this bottom out and hold on to it. And I'm gonna drop, okay, so my needles already dropped like I did last time. I'm holding on to that pleat. Stop, turn, making sure my pleat's gonna go underneath there. Get my threads here, I have kind of popped up. Okay, so we're gonna continue on, making sure it's catching that pleat, okay? Keep going. Pick that up, holding on to this pleat. Take out the other one, holding on to the pleat, making sure everything's staying lined up. Like I said, you really don't want to rush this part. Hold on to my pleat. Pick it up, make sure my pleat goes under there. I take out my next one. Go ahead and take out my next clip here. Okay, we're gonna stop and turn. Take out my next clip. Take out my next one. Now, I'm, I, you really don't wanna take out this clip till you get as close as you can because of that elastic, okay? Take that clip out. Make sure you back stitch. And you're good to go. So we're going to, remember at this point you can clip the elastic off and then you can trim up any threads. I'm gonna go ahead and give my thoughts on um, the two pockets with the, the pleats here. Okay, well with the elastic. So the one that Cricut did, obviously you're gonna get a way tighter, um, you know, elastic here the the bunched up here and then on mine which you could pull it a little bit tighter and have it a little bit better but it's still going to be that pocket right now i will say this one was way easier to sew compared to this one because it bunches it so much that when i was sewing it actually i, I missed my back a couple times so i had to go back and and capture that so make sure if you're going to follow cricket's directions make sure for sure you're getting this up and you got all your pieces together okay so that one is a little bit more tedious um, um, if you're a new person sewing, you may want to do it this way, okay? But you can always pull this a little bit tighter just so it has a little bit more of a give, okay? So let's go ahead and move to the next step. So the next step, it's saying to let move on to the lining fabric next. So it's saying to take your two pieces here, and then you want to take your your big piece. This is the piece that you hand cut. This is your inside lining. You hand cut this piece. So what they now want you to do is take one side and you're going to do it by the short the, the width okay so you got the shorter width instead of the longer the length so you're going to take and right sides together just like this and what we want to do here is start at one corner just like this and you're going to pin that down because what we're going to do is that'll be sewn here and you may just have to do this as you sew, okay? So as you come up, you're going to bring your piece and round it. I'm just trying to show you so you can kind of get an idea. So you can either pin this or clip this, whatever you want to do. And then you're going to come, keep bringing your circle around this length here. Okay, and then turn this piece here like so. And then all the way till you get down to this corner right here. So you may have to come back and adjust just a little bit because basically this is just here to help you kind of um, as you're sewing, okay? But as you sew, this all should even out pretty well, okay? So what you're gonna do, so you should have something like, something like this. So let's take this over to the sewing machine and sew this one down and I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So now that we have our corners pinned together, just like this, like we talked about, um, we're going to go ahead and we want to do a 1 fourth inch seam allowance on this one. So you're going to get it right underneath there, lining it up. Let me take that back up just a little bit, bring it back down. Okay. So what we're going to do is 
making sure everything's lined up. We're gonna come forward a few stitches and we want a back stitch. Cause like I said, you really would hate to do all this work and it come apart. So back stitch and then come forward. Just this one you wanna be really slow with. Making sure the entire time, taking out that clip, making sure everything stays lined up, okay? So, we're gonna continue to come forward, making sure I'm staying at that one fourth inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna make sure these stay lined up here. And you really want your needle down, so every time you stop, your needle will come down. And we're just gonna continue to make sure that this is lining up. Like I said, this one is more of a slow process. Continuing to line these up. Lining up my corners down here. I'm going to go ahead and back stitch. That's good enough. Trim this off. And so let me go ahead and take this back over there so you can see what it's going to look like and we can get the other side pinned. So whenever you get this sewn, this is now what it's going to look like. So you're now creating that end cap. Um, just like the other one, so it's looking just like this. So what we're, what I'm going to go ahead and do before I go any further, I'm going to kind of get it out just like this. If you'll be able to really see this or not, and I'm going to try to take my iron just to kind of get this pressed out just a little bit to kind of help get those pushed out. Now you can always finger press this, whatever you feel comfortable with. That way it just kind of really helps bring that out. So see, now you've got your side pocket. So basically you're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side, just like so. So as soon as you get this all pinned again, just like we did the first time, you could always rewind this video and rewatch that again. I wanna be able to have enough time to do the outside. So I'm gonna go sew this together. We'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like and we'll move on to the top cover. Okay, now I have sewn this side and this is what it looks like. And so now it's complete. So it's just like the other one where it actually looks like the cover, but this is gonna be the inside lining. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move this one out of the way. So that inside is absolutely complete. So the next step that you're gonna do is you're gonna take your top one. So it's basically the exact same thing, except now we are going to be doing the, um, now this time what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing it to to this side so we'll be doing the exact same thing and so whenever you flip it around it'll be on this side so you're going to do the exact same thing as you did before and then i'm going to come over here and pin this corner here this time just to kind of help make it a little bit easier for me to keep track so i'm going to pin this corner and then basically what you're gonna do is you're, when you're sewing all the way around, you're making sure that this is going all the way around. So this bit may be another way for you to pin a little bit easier. Just like this. And like so. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pin this other side. So whenever you get it, it's going to look just like this on the inside. So let me go ahead and pin this side. What you're going to do is you're going to pin this corner again. And we're going to pin this corner. Then what we're going to do is take and center it up. And just kind of pin this middle here just so I can kind of see what's going on just like that okay so we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine get these two sides sewn down and we'll come back here okay. so now we've got this ready to go we've got it all pinned in place we're gonna take our corner just as we did before and now we are doing remember a fourth inch seam allowance so we're gonna get it right underneath here just making sure everybody's staying lined up because you're messing with several layers here with this top one, okay? So we're gonna come forward a few stitches, go backwards just to make sure we don't lose anything. And making sure everybody's lining up for a takeoff. And remember, this is more of a slower process. And if you do it this way the first time with the um, by pinning it this way like I just did with the um, inside lining it would actually make it a lot easier I'm noticing that now okay so we're gonna continue forward just making sure everything's staying lined up Just pulling underneath to make sure that it's not coming out the, so the side over here. Continuing on, stopping every so often because it will happen, it'll slip. So just making sure everybody's staying lined up. We're gonna take that clip out and get these two lined up. Now we're getting to that elastic, so I'm going to go ahead and grab on my other side. Not pulling hard, just helping it go through the sewing machine. Okay. Stand at that one-fourth inch, making sure everybody's lining up. Now, if it seems like your fabric's getting a little bit longer, um, and it will do that, um, just kind of try to make a small pleat somewhere on the side because you're not going to be able to see it whenever you put your uh, bias tape and kind of go over that just to kind of help hold it in place because you really don't want to trim nothing off. Okay, now on a back stitch. All right, pull that side out. Trim these threads. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this other side just so it's ready to go. I'm probably not in frame, but that's okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do, so let me show you real quick before I go to the other side what it's looking like. So your pocket's looking like this, so now you can have it just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna double check and make sure I, I grabbed all of my fabric. So I'm just double checking, making sure that I grabbed all the layers. So I did on that one, so we're gonna move to the next one. Under the foot here. Go forward a few stitches, back stitch, come forward. And I'm just double checking that everybody is lined up. continue around here just like so making sure I've got all the layers going on we're just going to continue on here and now remember, this is where the elastic is, so I'm gonna grab the opposite side here, just kind of helping it come through. 
So kind of pushing and pulling at the same time, but don't pull hard, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm just making sure everything's lined up. It's looking good. And I'm gonna go ahead and unclip this one. I'm gonna back stitch it. All right, and we're gonna trim it. Okay, let's go ahead and, I think these threads are just real tiny, so we're okay. All right, so let's go ahead and take this over to the pressing board and let's show you what we got. Okay, so now I've got the pockets on here, just like so. So this is what it's looking like here. So you've got your little pockets just like this. This is what the inside looks like. Now this is the one that I did where, like I said, I already had the elastic. I came down three-fourths and sewn down to make it a little easier. This is the Cricut Pocket, so it is going to be more tighter. I mean, I do like the look, but if you're a new sewer, you really kind of want to do something like this, okay? But you could, I mean, it's, it's totally up to preference, okay? So that's what that looks like. But this is what your top's going to look like, just like this. So there's your top. It looks just like the, the other one I've created. Now what we're going to do next, this is the next step. I'm going to go ahead and do just like I did before. And I'm going to press these pockets just like that, just a little bit. So I don't mess up my pleats in the front. Just trying to get it where my... Uh, it's going to be a little more um, in the corners here. And you can finger press this like I said, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our, any, our inner lining. And this is what makes it super simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to inside this one inside the top one so now you don't need you need to have um wrong sides together is what it is okay so what you're going to do is you're just going to flip the inside out and you're just going to line it up so what you want to do is come over here to like where your pockets are and basically line those up and make sure where they're supposed to be and then clip it and then come over to the other pocket and make sure it's lined up where it needs to be all right and then come to the opposite side so we're going to come to the opposite side, making sure our pockets are lined up where they need to be, just like so. Now this is the part where I'm talking about if you don't back stitch here, you could possibly be messing with all this and be pulling stitches out. And you don't want to do that because then it's not going to um, look right. But you really want to line these pockets up. That's very important because that's where it's going to sit on its corners. So once you do that, you could kind of pull it straight just like this and grab it right here in the middle and get a pin all right and do it again just to kind of make sure we're lining everything up and pin it here now you can pin that as many times as you want to but that looks good to me oh hold on let me see hold on okay so now the next step is you can either go around this with like a 1 4 inch seam allowance just to make sure it's in place, but you don't even have to do that. You just need to get it pinned down like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our bias tape that I created, okay? Now you can, like I said, you could buy the one from the store, just regular bias tape, or you could create your own. We talked about that at the beginning of the video. And now what I'm going to do is start getting this, making sure that my two pieces of fabric are staying lined up. And I'm going to start attaching my bias tape just like that. So once I get it where I need it, I'll clip it. And then, so I'm going to continue to just making sure lining's staying lined up. Get my bias tape right down the middle here. Keep it in it pull taut so that way I'm not going, you know, messing stuff up. So that way I'm going to then do another pin. And then we'll unpin this one here. And we're just going to keep attaching this bias tape just like this. So we got this right here. We're just going to pin it. And now I could have, I did not attach my two bias pieces, so that would have made one long one. But you really do want to do that so you don't have so many overlap pieces. So I would have had one instead of two. But I didn't really feel like doing that last night because I had to pull the sewing machine out just to get those two pieces. And I didn't want to do that till today. So mine are separate. But yours would be together, especially if you you just bought your bias tape. Now, let's see here. I'm just continuing making sure both fabrics are lined up. 
pushing it all the way down in there. So I'm going to continue this right here and we'll come back when we're ready to sew. I'll meet you at the sew machine. Okay, so now we have our binding piece on. I just got it pinned all the way around. When you get to where you need to overlap it, you just want to overlap it one inch. You're just going to set it right on top of the other and, um, then, and then cut the excess off and pin it down just like that. So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to find one spot and start. And I like to stop maybe right here where you have your, you know, your, uh, seam here. That's where I'm going to start. Okay. Not even where it starts with a little piece together. I'm going to start right here. So that way it lands into a seam. So I'm going to undo this, making sure I'm keeping all my layers together here. I am going to line this up and stitch as close as I can to the top. So let's go ahead and start. When you unclip one, try to hold it real tight on the other side so that way it don't shift. Now, if you're a new sewer, you may want to start where it began right here just to be safe. But, um, you know, I don't really have an issue with it. So, it's just totally up to you whether you want to try to hide your stitches or, or not. And then also, if you wanted to, you could always calculate it to where your binding started at a spot like that. We are almost done with this project. Okay, so that's where it's telling me that I am out of bobbin thread, but I've still got enough that I can keep going. So I just want to kind of let you know what that was. Make sure you, before you start this entire project, you got a nice um, bobbin in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just keep an eye on my bobbin, make sure I'm not running out, but I think I'm getting close, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. Now my video, I'm hoping, is not going to come out too bouncy because it is sitting on the table I'm sewing. So if it does, I apologize. Okay, so we're nearing the end here. So what we're gonna do is just keep going. And I'm gonna look at my bobbin and it seems like I'm gonna make it maybe. I say make it and then I say maybe. And when you get to these pleats here, it's gonna seem a little bumpy, but, cause you're messing with so many layers of fabric, but you'll be all right. All right, now whenever, I wanna make sure that this overlap binding here stays underneath picking it up again there we go. making sure I'm going over that pleat when I get 
back here at the beginning, I am going to reverse. All right, and we're done. And I made it without having to change my bobbin. Pretty proud of myself. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just trim all this excess thread here, just like before. All right. And let's go ahead and go over to the uh, pressing board and I'm gonna show you what the final product's gonna look like. Let's try it out on our Cricut. Okay, so now we've got it all sewn up just like that. And here is our cover. Let me put it this way so you can see all my designs. Here is the cover for the Cricut Maker. It fits on there just like this. You have your binding, you have your little pockets here on the side. And so it looks just like that, just like the other one. Um, like I said, if you wanted to do a solid piece instead of the three pieces, you would just cut two times the one that you have to cut out, the 17.5 by 21.5. And you would just not cut out, and you would repeat the process to do the outside just like you would do the inside, except for you still need to do your pockets, okay? So you would just skip cutting these out if you wanted to do a whole solid. Now if you wanted to reverse it, but at the same time you already have a solid piece like this. So if you wanted to have it this direction, you would just slide it on just like that, okay? So um, I hope you guys found this more helpful this time. Um, I really hope that a beginner sewer can really understand these directions. I try to really slow down and explain it a little more. And like I said, if you are a um, an, ex uh, an expert sewer, you can always just kind of skip some of these um, if you need to. So you can kind of fast forward through here. I try to make the videos not as long as I can, but um, there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, if you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.